and welcome to another episode of Partners Project. I'm right now with Caleb Nation. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Not you, me. You're like, it's crazy. It's Carol Lazar. <laughs> How would you describe your channel? Crazy, random skits and pretty much whatever I want. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes I'll do vlogs about me doing writing. Guess what I've been doing? Writing! Like a madman! Probably every month I'll do like a music video where I'll, like last, a couple weeks ago I made a song about Tumblr. I made a song about how I was obsessed with Tumblr and then sometimes I'll just do like red carpet interviews. It's just pretty much mm -hmm. anything that I want to post, I post it on my channel. And then I have like the 60SR show, which is really like a, a produced show that I do where it's 60 seconds of a rant of something in the news that I want to talk about. This is the 60SR show with 60 seconds of random news. Caleb Nation is your real name. That's not your stage name. No, it actually, it's, it's my real name. A lot of people tell me all the time they think it's like Caleb Worlds or Caleb Planet and it's just what I, I call the group of people that watch me. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's my real name. Uh, this is Questionation. The story goes that my great 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 grandfather was a Choctaw Indian chief. Mm -hmm. And so we think that it comes from like being the Choctaw nation, something like that, something. And you can't really tell, like I don't really look very Native American, mm -hmm. but if you look at other people that are kind of like four generations down with Native American really high up, then you can kind of see it's, it's a little bit there. It's kind of sort of. Some leadership in you, yeah. your ancestry. Maybe, I hope. <laughs> hey there, Nationers. I have had a very eventful week. Where are you from? How did you get out to LA? I'm actually from Texas, is where I grew up. And for like the first 14 years of my life, I kind of lived in the suburbs. Mm -hmm. I was kind of slightly, slightly normal. And then we moved into the deep, deep country all of a sudden. And I spent the next five years of my teenage life from 14 all the way to 19 living on this farm in the middle of absolutely nowhere, like 25 minutes to the nearest Walmart. Wow. I mean, to get anywhere, I mean, it was 10 minutes down a dirt road just to get to our house. So a lot of stuff that I did is I, I watched YouTube and I did stuff while I was at home and didn't really have places to go because you could like go outside and chase chickens or you could sit indoors and watch YouTube. As a pair of ladies, do you suppose that I should dye the beard blonde to match the hair? My first videos ever on YouTube were not videos of me, they were videos of like our pet pig running around. I mean, that could go viral, pet pigs. She got a lot of views. It was on a different channel. Like if, if you look it up, if you search Isabel the famous pig, you'll find my old, old videos. On you could have made each animal a character. You know, like if I'd been smart, show. I could have done that. Yeah, because chickens are insane and goats are psychotic, demonic creatures. Goats, goats <laughs> would have a show all their own because goats are like demonic. Like goats will chase you and bite you and destroy things. Chickens destroy stuff. Pigs are kind though, strangely enough. Like Charlotte's Web. Yeah, or like Babe. Or Babe. <laughs> Something right, I wanna be a gangster, but I'm too white. So when was the first time you uploaded a video of yourself as Caleb Nations? My first video I uploaded myself was probably three or four years ago whenever I went to college. And while I was in college, I was just gonna make crazy funny videos to send back home to my family who were still at home. And so I think the first video, if I remember correctly, the first video that I did where it was me mm -hmm. was a video about what college guys eat. And it was comparing all the nice, healthy foods I ate at home to like the microwavable lasagnas that I had every day in Tuna Helper in college. Mm -hmm. I'm an internet slave. Like I didn't really have an audience, but people found it somehow. And they commented on it and they liked it. And that kind of, it made me interested. Like, wow, these are people I don't even know mm -hmm. that are watching my video and enjoying it. And so I just kind of kept doing these little crazy vlogs. Like, oh, I did this in college today. And built upon that. And then people started following and they wanted to know what's more and what are you doing now? And, so earlier today, I was driving somewhere. Caleb, what are some of your favorite videos that you've done? Probably my favorite video that I've ever done is called Pop-Tart Heart. And it's a music video that I made as a love song to Nyan Cat. What do I do with my heart when it's and I basically tell the story, like the true story of what Nyan Cat is doing in space is searching for love. <laughs> Flying through space trying to get back to me. 
and so it's kind of like a sad and slightly terrible story. That's awesome. <laughs> what inspired that? How do you come up with these ideas? Oh, I, I just, I love Nyan Cat. That's my favorite <laughs> thing in the world. It's like people were asking me, what do you want for Christmas? And I said, just give me anything Nyan Cat related. Give me a Nyan Cat painting so I can put inside of, in my, my office or something. So and I thought, well, what is the cat doing in space? Oh, she's in love with me. <laughs> <laughs> What inspires you? I mean, you mentioned Philly D. Do you have anyone off of YouTube or on YouTube that has influenced your work? Um, my dad is the funniest person in the world. So any of my humor, I have gotten from my dad. Mm -hmm. Like I grew up and he never did anything in entertainment, which is crazy because I think growing up, I didn't realize how hilarious my dad was, but it was like constant, constant joking, constant pranking. And I, I grew up in that atmosphere mm -hmm. and it, it really got me. But like on, on YouTube, I'm really inspired, I mean, Phil E.D., of course. Like, yeah. I, I watch Phil a lot, and it's mostly to learn from what he does. Mm -hmm. I, I like watching him, I, I think he, he's, because I, I go back and watch his old stuff, and I see how he's progressed, and I think, oh, I can progress, I can learn, I don't yeah. feel so bad. So recently somebody asked me what I would do if I became a really, really, really famous author one day. Where do you see YouTube going in the next year? <sighs> I think YouTube is, it's going to get a lot more mainstream media mm -hmm. oriented. You're gonna have a lot of mainstream media, like, tapping into, like I'm already seeing it now where mainstream media is taking YouTubers and getting them to go do stuff on TV. And it's, we're very much more respected than we were. Like 10 years ago, I mean, well, I guess it wasn't 10 years, probably like four years ago, yeah. everyone thought it's all cat videos. But now Hollywood actually, go, like I've been called in, like I had like MTV call in, it's like they found a video of mine and they're like, come in and do an audition. It's like, I don't, I've never, I never had any intention of going into entertainment. Like mm -hmm. entertainment comes after me. And so that's happened to a lot of my friends where they do YouTube videos and the entertainment business is like, oh, we like this. It's like almost doing like a demo reel of yourself. Yeah. But you're also doing it by yourself. I mean, what does that mean for your work in the future as these bigger people are kind of mm. coming in into your you know, territory? How do you feel about that? I don't think that there's so much of a, of a I guess, a gap between the mm -hmm. two. I think people perceive that there's a gap, but it's, this, I mean, you have, People like the top YouTubers are like cable networks all on their own. Yeah. So they, they already have their own TV shows. Most of them don't even want TV shows because they're doing much better online anyway. TV is going to mimic online much more very soon because online is basically, it's a proven success. When you have 20 million views on a video, it's proven success. You can tell they like it, they engage with the people. So it's, it's a different field. Mm -hmm. As in making a TV show about my life. Well, Caleb, it was a pleasure oh, talking so awesome to you and here. hearing your incredible brilliant story of 800 <laughs> careers that makes me feel really not worthy. No, sorry. you're an inspiration <laughs> well, and you do you. awesome stuff, so thank you. And thanks to all of you for watching and supporting what we love doing. We couldn't be here and doing all this without your support. Stay tuned next week for another Partners Project. <laughs>